Anytime when I'm making a video, whether it's for myself or for a client, one of the most stressful parts is finding the right song for the project. And because I know a lot of people can probably relate to that statement, in this video I wanted to talk about my go-to music licensing platforms where I find songs for my videos. Some of these you probably already know of, but I want to mention too that I haven't really heard many people talking about, and one of them is actually free. And I know that a lot of people are skeptical whenever they hear that something is free because they just automatically assume that it's gonna suck, but in reality this one is surprisingly good. This isn't necessarily gonna be like a comparison between all of these platforms, it's more of like an overview of the reasons why I like them as well as some of the stuff that I'm not the biggest fan of. And hopefully I'm able to help you figure out which of these platforms you might want to try out for yourself, but just to be clear, this isn't going to be a video on the topic of how I actually find music because that's going to be a whole separate video that I'm planning on making down the line. Also this video isn't going to be sponsored by any of the platforms that I'm going to be mentioning, but I do have affiliate links for some of them that you can use if you want to support the channel. That being said, I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible and these are all my honest thoughts and opinions, but if you prefer not using my links you can just google each of these platforms on your own and sign up that way. So we're gonna start with one of the more popular platforms that I'm pretty sure most of you have probably already heard about and that's Epidemic Sound. And the reason I'm starting with this one is because out of all of the platforms that we're talking about this is the one that I've used for the longest time. I've used it for pretty much every channel that I've had over the years and generally speaking I've been pretty happy with it because they've got this huge library of all sorts of different songs as well as a huge selection of sound effects. In terms of pricing plans, they are pretty fair and straightforward and whether you're a solo creator that's just going to be using their music for your own personal stuff or you want to be using it for client work, they've got subscription options that should fit pretty much everyone. On top of that, it just feels like the team behind Epidemic are really focused on trying to make the user experience better every time they update it and if I look at the way that the site works and looks right now and compare it to what it was a few years ago, it's very clear how much of a difference there is with with stuff like the way they categorize music and all of the search options that you can use. That being said, something that I'm not the biggest fan of is the fact that one of Epidemic's best features is also one of their biggest drawbacks, and that is their library is so huge that sometimes it can be hard to actually find what you're looking for. You might be able to find something that you think is going to work well for your project, but then you get into this mindset of being worried about potentially missing out on something that's even better, and so it just kind of sends you down the rabbit hole of looking for even more songs. If you actually know what you're looking for, you can be really specific with how you set up all of the search options and that shouldn't be too much of an issue, but that's definitely something that's happened to me. I don't really think that this is something the team behind Epidemic can do anything about, it's more of like a user problem, but I'm trying to give you my genuine thoughts about it, so it's something worth mentioning. Next up is a platform that I've only recently started using over the past few months called Track Club, and full disclosure, they have sponsored one of my videos in the past, but I genuinely do like them and ever since then I've been using their stuff for a bunch of different projects. Now they are a relatively new platform and because of that their music library isn't going to be as big as some of the other ones that we're going to be talking about, but the stuff that they have on there is actually really good and I'm sure that with time it's gonna get even better. It definitely feels like they have a lot of potential and the way they categorize their music plus all of the search features that you can use to try and find what you're looking for on their site work really well. They also have this really handy feature built directly into their website called Mixlab and with it you can pick a song that you like and then you get to customize it even more by controlling the individual volume of separate elements or you can choose which ones you want to disable if there are ones that you don't like and then you get to download that custom mix and drop that into your timeline. It kind of saves you the trouble of like filling up 20 different audio tracks with separate audio stems but if you're old school and if that's how you prefer doing things you do have the option to download the separate audio stems of every song which is actually something that you can also do on Epidemic Sound but I forgot to mention that. As far as drawbacks for Track Club the only one that I can think about right 
now is because of the fact that they're still relatively new and because of the mechanics of how their Mixlab feature works, sometimes you might run into some bugs with it. Like for example, sometimes if I customize a song and then I download my mix of it, the audio level is going to be way lower than it should be, or it's going to start off being fine, but then it's progressively going to get quieter, almost as if I have like a crossfade on it. And then sometimes if I mute or if I mess with the volume of some elements, they're going to end up sounding a little bit distorted when I download my mix. But usually if I refresh the website and then I customize the song again and download it a second time, it fixes those issues most of the time, at least for me. But that being said, it's not something that happens super often and I'm pretty sure that it's going to get fixed eventually. The next platform is one that I haven't heard anyone talking about, which is really weird considering that it's actually pretty good. It's called Upbeat and it's the one that I said is free in the beginning of the video. One of its coolest features is that if you're somebody that's working on a really tight budget or if you don't have a budget at all, every month you get 10 credits to your account that you can then use to download songs from their free library. All you have to do is copy and paste a credit into your video description that the site automatically generates for you every time when you download a free song. Now I know that most of you are probably thinking that the free songs are terrible and believe me when I first found this website I kind of had the same opinion but after actually looking through what they had to offer I was really surprised at the quality of music you can get even without paying anything. The way they categorize music is great, the search features are super useful and well set up and the overall quality of the stuff on there is surprisingly good. Obviously if you sign up for one of their premium plans you get access to their entire library as well as a bunch of the sound effects they offer and their premium plans themselves have a very fair price and they've got one for personal use as well as one for business use if you're going to be doing stuff for clients. If I had to mention something that I'm not the biggest fan of with Upbeat, I should probably start with the fact that if you're strictly going to be a free user, you need to be really mindful of how you use the free credits because if you end up using all of them at the start of the month, you have to wait a really long time for them to refresh. Also, depending on how many songs you use per video as well as how many videos you make per month, you might find that 10 credits just isn't enough, but they obviously did that because they have to give you some sort of reason to sign up for their premium plan, but it is something to think about. Honestly though, none of those drawbacks are something that would stop me from recommending Upbeat, and because I really like it and you can just try it out for free, it's just kind of a no-brainer. And finally, I have two quick honorable mentions, and they are Artlist and Musicbed. Both of them are great platforms with a great selection of music that I've used in the past, but I currently don't use them, and there's no specific reason for it. I just don't really feel like I need to be using absolutely every music licensing platform out there, because I have a couple that work well enough for me. That being said, you should definitely still check them out, and if you decide that you like the stuff they have on there, you can feel free to use them. So I can't really tell you which of these platforms you should be using because that's going to be a really subjective thing. These are some of the ones that I currently use or have used in the past and I feel comfortable recommending, but the best way to really figure out which one works for you is to just try all of them out and see which one you like. Like I said at the start, I'll have affiliate links for the platforms I currently use in the description below, and if you decide to sign up through one of those, it's a great way to support me, but again, if you prefer to just google them for yourself, that's fine as well. As always, thank you so much for watching until the end, I genuinely appreciate it. Consider sticking around by subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.